So this is a bait that came from Hedden. It is called the Zaragoza. And if it looks a little bit like a sluggo, that's probably not by mistake. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Good morning and welcome to Retro Bassin. We have been sitting on a little bit of mail from some of our bassin buds around the country and out of the country as well. And today we're going to crack open a few packages for the camera. By the way, if this is your First time here at Retro Bassin, and you like to fish it old school. I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past. Well, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video like this one. By far, one of the coolest things about this YouTube channel are the photos, messages, and packages that I get from you Bassin Buds. I am pretty active on social media, or at least like the social media that I can figure out. If you are ever over on Facebook or Instagram, I am uh, pretty responsive on both those. And I love to see photos, either of fish that you've caught on old school tackle or any old school gold that you've uncovered in your lure hunting journeys. So today we're gonna crack open some mail from some bass and buds that got sent to me and... <sighs> I'm always like a kid at Christmas when it comes to this stuff. So the first package comes from a new Bassin Bud by the name of Andrew Butler, who uh, is up in Canada. Thus, uh, I've got my Canadian shirt on today. <laughs> All right, so we've got a, a little bit of a letter here I'll read. Howdy, I love your videos. So I went through uh, some soft plastics and pulled out the oldest stuff that I could find. I don't get out as much as I did. Uh, so these are better off in your tackle box. <laughs> I am a logger and I keep it old school with vintage saws and trucks. <laughs> I'd like to see that. So I definitely appreciate what you are doing. Cheers, Bushman. Well, Bushman, thank you, sir, for the uh, the package. I can't wait to see what old school gold we have inside. Oh, wow. So first things first, it looks like I've got a package of some plastics here from Berkeley. Oh, what is this? A nice old school Berkeley power tube. <laughs> oh, we've got some soft plastic baits from Venom Lures. Look like some sort of little tube as well. I imagine these would be really good on some deep, clear, rocky lakes for smallmouth bass. And what is this? Okay, so we've got some worms from Gambler. Nice. And lastly, a... Uh, <laughs> little pack of power bait, which clearly was a catcher because I just see one little grub left. <laughs> awesome. What else do we have in here? Oh, very cool. So I've got a hat from a Butler Outdoors Canada. <laughs> that is very cool. Check that out. So it says Butler Outdoors Canada. Well, thank you, good buddy. Uh, that's in the package, so we'll have to decide if I open that later or maybe just keep it... Uh, <laughs> all boxed up. Okay, we've got another package that came from Butler Outdoors as well, and this looks a little bit more like a rod, doesn't it? Or something like that. I'm gonna try to open this thing in a way that doesn't uh, break whatever the contents was. I can do this so much more efficiently, I'm just scared to cut myself on camera. <laughs> 
All right, there we go. I think we're getting somewhere. Oh. What do we have here? So this is indeed an old school rod. Oh man. What? Wow, look at that bad Oscar. Holy cow. There's old school and then there's really old school. So that looks like an old level wind of some sort. And it looks like some vintage rod, little two piece. Oh wow, <laughs> that is pretty cool. So this one's probably gonna be a collector, not a caster. But just the same, that is really cool, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> Look at that. What's crazy about the old school rods and reels is how heavy they are. This is a heavy piece of equipment. I've got a couple of these that are in casting condition and I gotta be honest with you, they're not the easiest things to cast with. And part of me thinks that might have to do with the fact that most folks were probably trolling with this style of level wand. But either way, uh, thank you Butler Outdoors for that thing. Alright, next we've got a little letter here. Uh, this comes from D. Uh, vale in Virginia. Alright. I'll try to cut this without destroying what the uh, contents are. Looks like a patch and a note. <laughs> Dear Mr. Basson, it was a great delight that I stumbled across your YouTube channel. Please keep up the great work you do of reminding me of the good old days when I started to get bass fever. Please accept the enclosed patch. While it is not exactly rare, it was on my first real fishing hats from the 1970s. Oh man, that is awesome. Look at that, a nice old school Rebel Lures patch and thank you for sharing a little piece of your own fishing history. Awesome. <laughs> we'll find a good home for that, for sure. All right. Next one comes from Bass and Bud Bob uh, over in Eagle, Wisconsin. All right, man. Whatever Bass and Bud Bob said, it sounds a little bit rattly, which uh, always gets me excited. <laughs> you know they say fishing lures are designed to catch fishermen, not fish. I'm pretty sure that rattling baits were designed to catch fishermen as well. <laughs> or at least retro bassers, I don't know. Oh wow. What do we have here? Ho ho ho. All right, let's start with a little note here. I see some old school gold down there for sure though. All right, howdy Chris. Hope all is well on your end. Uh, hope you enjoy a little retro gold from up north in Wisconsin. Contained you will find. Oh wow, okay, let's um, he looks like he actually describes everything that we've got. So I'll read the note and pull up the product as we hit it here. First things first, a Babe Winkleman. You're right, the best name in fishing. And it is the best name in fishing. A Lindy Shadling. Okay. Oh, wow, there we go. So there is a Babe Winkleman Lindy Shadling, which, by the way, is an old school lure that I've been looking for that I don't have. Uh, I've been wanting to throw these for a little while. I think I used to have one of them as a kid, but I've since lost it, so that is awesome. The walleye fishermen love them here and have long since been discontinued. You know how that goes. If it is no longer available, it's always the bait to fish when the fish are biting. But they slay bass as well. Awesome, that is very cool. I will definitely be adding that to the old crankbait tackle box. Next, a few Blue Fox Super Vibes and a few Meps Lightnings. Uh, another gotta have that isn't made anymore. Okay, so, oh wow, there we go. So yeah, there you go. Check out those old MEPS Lightnings. And actually, I just picked up a few of these from Discount Tackle in Denver not too long ago, but I didn't open them yet. 
So kind of pumped to have a few that are already opened. That, by the way, was a money little spinner for me back in the day for chasing white perch in the Tidal Seven River. This exact color, it's almost a chartreuse green metallic looking spinner. Man, oh, I love that one. And here's one that I didn't have growing up, but I've been eyeing for a little while. And it is a Meps Lightning in a red. Ooh. Both those guys are totally going to be casters. Awesome. And yeah, a couple of little blue fox. These are the mini ones. I don't know that I've thrown a lot of the blue fox that are this size. That is a teeny little spinner bit. I think that's a size zero, if I recall. What I love about the blue fox, by the way, is that it's almost got a bell sound. Listen to this. All right, next, we've got a few Zeragoses that you mentioned in a video a while back. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did mention these. And, ooh, a couple colors that I don't know that I've got. So, this is a bait that came from Hedden. It is called the Zaragoza. And if it looks a little bit like a Sluggo, that's probably not by mistake. This bait was actually designed to be sort of a hard version of a Sluggo. It's jointed in the middle, but it's weighted and it's got a similar profile to a soft plastic jerk bait. So, it's meant to fish a lot like a soft plastic jerk bait with the added benefit of a couple of treble hooks if you're fishing an area that doesn't have too much vegetation. So it came in two sizes. Here's a smaller size. I don't know if that's a three and a half inch right there. And then there is the bigger Zaragoza. Ooh, look at that. That's actually a really good looking color. I've got a feeling you could throw that thing around some boat docks in a deep clear lake and probably do some damage on some fish. This thing's actually got a little bit of a weight to it, so this is totally a bait you could throw on a bait caster all day long. Awesome. All right, next we have a Jimmy Houston Super Spook, and it says, wish you would have had this in time for your small water charters trip. Uh, Bass and Bub Bob, so do I, because as you know, I had a tough go at it on the old small water charters trip. But this is a good looking bait, and I don't have one of these, to be honest with you. So we'll just rip open the package here. I've thrown a lot of Zara Spooks. I've never actually thrown the Super Spook, but first impressions, it's a more hefty bait. It's definitely a bigger profile, it's heavier, and it's got that third hook on it as well, which is nice. Whew, but I gotta tell you, uh, on a Abu Garcia Ambassador with some 20 pound line, I could sling this thing probably halfway across the lake. That's a good looking bait. And that's probably gonna go right on top of my Jimmy Houston display until such time as we get her in the old tackle box. <laughs> nice. Next, we've got a pre rapala Storm Junior Thunderstick. Ooh, we do have a pre rapala Storm Junior Thunderstick. That's a good looking little minnow bait. Little shallow diver. That looks like probably about a three and a half inch bait right there. Oh man. Yeah, you could totally throw that on a little spinning rod and do some damage for sure. Awesome bait, but that's gonna be a collector because that packaging is, is awesome. <laughs> so yeah, we're not throwing that one. Okay, so next we have a vintage Rapala, uh, one of my go-tos for sure and Oh, there's the old school Rapala package. Look at that. That looks like a Rapala minnow right there. Oh, wow. Let's take a look at this piece of artwork. So that is a good looking piece of machinery right there. What's so interesting about these Rapalas, is it's a really finessey kind of bait. I don't think I really appreciated early in my fishing career how finessey this bait was. I often tried to throw it on tackle, it was just too heavy. Even this bait though, this, you know, we'll say what, five and a half inch minnow bait, this is not really a bait caster bait for me. This is, you know, light line, spinning rod, really finessey bait, but boy, um, yeah, that's an oldie but a goodie, isn't it? All 
Okay, next we've got some uh, Lunker City Herb Reed Sluggos. Oh, we do. And old school packaging for the Sluggo, which is awesome, in a little three inch model. Not a model of Sluggo that I have a ton of exposure to. I pretty much fish with either that four and a half inch or the six inch model. So the three is a little bit of a new one for me, but that's a good looking little bait. What I love about the Sluggo were all the instructions they included in it. So the back, rigging instructions, really some detailed information on how to properly fish this bait. And let's see if we have, yeah, some more instructions on the underbelly of the card as well. That is awesome. Okay, and lastly, we have a modern bait, uh, but it's one that outfishes every bait I have tried, sometimes by huge margins. It's made by a former team member of mine when I was at Mercury Marine, and it's called an eye catcher. Ooh. It was designed to catch walleye, but everything loves this thing. It's amazing. I don't know what it is. It's just a lipless vibe bait, but... Whoa, son. <laughs> okay... So, gotta be honest with you, I am stumped by this, but that is really cool. It is called an eye catcher, and almost has sort of a, a Japanese looking packaging. I don't know why, <laughs> maybe it's just me. Well, let's see if we can open this thing and see what we've got inside. Okay, so there is the eye catcher. It is definitely a little lipless crankbait. I would say it's got more of a long profile compared to the standard one, so a little bit more of like a Cordell minnow spot, but it's got some weight to it. This is a heavy, tight little bait. Yeah, I could see this thing working on some bass for sure. Why is it so effective? I don't know. Probably the first thing is its profile. It's small. Every bass is going to eat a bait fish of this size. Two, it's heavy. So I imagine you could probably throw this on bait casting equipment, no problem, and cast this thing a country mile. Oh, that is awesome. Well, thank you for that. Uh, well, I hope these bring you as much joy uh, to your days as every Saturday morning does for me. Oh, tight line, sir. Never stop fishing it old school. Your bass and bud, Bob, thank you. P.S. If you ever get up north, uh, make it in late May to September. We have a place that is catch and release only, and we have 100 bass days between me and my buddy. Wow. Nothing huge, all around two pounds, but the action is always hot. And we've literally never had an off day. Well, Bass and Bub Bob, that is a offer that I probably can't refuse. So thank you so much for the gear. I really appreciate it. We are definitely going to be casting some of this. And we're definitely going to be collecting some of it. So, so thank you. And to all my Bass and Buds out there, thank you for tuning in every Saturday that we do this. I appreciate all the feedback that I get. Both the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Not too much ugly, fortunately. Definitely hit me up on Instagram and Facebook. Till next time, Bass and Buds, keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.